I'm pleased to present Eileen Thurlin with the uh, Rollo May Award and to introduce her a little bit. Uh, she edited a book recently called Whole Person Healthcare. And the whole person, I think, is a major theme in differentiating humanistic psychology from other types of psychology. Nothing is left out. We deal with everything, including the transpersonal, which Eileen has been involved in. And I first met Eileen at Saybrook University. I came in as a uh, new academic dean there, and she was on the faculty. And one of the things that most impressed me was her fierce advocacy on behalf of students, and likewise their loyalty to her. So she was a very well-beloved professor. Uh, she's also taught at a number of other schools, such as Leslie and UCLA, and also been involved in a number of training programs for therapists at the New York Gestalt Institute and the CG Unit Institute. And she's also been a leader in many areas of psychology. For example, she served as president of this division and on council for APA, and she, in her local community, uh, president of the San Francisco Psychological Association. Uh, she also was a practitioner, and in line with uh, uh, being an academic scholar and practitioner, uh, a dance therapist, a licensed psychologist, and uh, she's written many articles and book chapters. Uh, she's won awards. She's a fellow of the American Psychological Association. Uh, but most of all, a caring individual, a person who uh, fights for social justice and willing to speak out. Uh, I'm very impressed with her work in Jordan, uh, bringing dance and movement therapy there. And in this regard, I see her as an exemplar of the whole person, a humanistic psychologist who plays many roles and plays them artfully. Thank you. Let's have a moment of silence for the for the laptop here, <laughs> the machines. <laughs> um, so first of all, I want to thank you all for your indulgence. I want to thank Theopia and Donna for. Um, I knew there was going to be a problem with the technology, but I so wanted to show some since so much of what I do is movement. I have some video clips, and it turns out to be technically very difficult to embed video clips so they actually move when you show them when you translate them to a different laptop. So we had many iterations, and our tech person, Bill Dahl, and others, we've been working for weeks on this, so we all got a little bit hysterical about that they should work today, because I have nothing to say, it's all on slides. <laughs> <laughs> so, number two, and I'd really like to thank my dear family who's here, my triplet sisters, whom some of you have met, my husband, family members and friends, so thank you for coming so very far away for this. Let's see. As you know, Rollo was a painter, and uh, I actually was on the board, and thank you, Harris, and those on the, uh, on the board of Division 32 for championing in this. And I want to say I was on the board when the uh, award got created, and, and my vision for all of me, my, my, one of my connections to him is as an artist, so I'm really going to talk about the centrality of art. These are Rollo's paintings, as some of you may have known in, um, in uh, Creating Beauty and um, many of his other books, he traveled through Athens, Europe, painting. And those are his paintings, and I just happened to see, that's mine. So his was Greece, this one's Italy. But the importance of art, I just wanted to talk about, first of all, art as a way of seeing. I think Rollo understood this, I feel this very strongly. It's not about the product of the image, it's about the way we see imagistically, about the role of the imagination, it's about having the soul of an artist. He says many things about the role of art, and that to me is music to my heart. So the importance of art for psychotherapy, I promise I won't read all these slides you can see. 
Um, but what he really talks about is, and this is the existential dimension, the ability to create in the face of the void or the blank page, it takes an act of courage. And we all know that facing a blank page. Um, a very basic human need, the need to create, to express. Um, art touches, and we'll talk, I'll talk about them later in some of the work, many dimensions of the human which don't get expressed in words or in verbal language. And finally, art into expanded consciousness. Harris mentioned the transpersonal, all realms of human experience, depths and heights. These are just, I interspersed, as he does in his book. That was a painting I did in Venice. Art is a way of knowing. Um, I just taught a course on art-based research. It's a way of gathering data. It's a way of uh, demonstrating data. It's presenting data artfully. Um, another thing, my, um, my beginning in dance was as a folk dancer. So I've traveled through many countries learning their dances. It's a very quick way to immediately um, become part of another culture. And this is very important for the work that I do internationally. I think it's important to help us understand other cultures, whether it's verbal language or nonverbal, everything from nonverbal behavior, simple proxemics, how close, how far, to how people express themselves, how they say yes, how they say no, very simple things to much more complex symbols embedded in the dances. So the universality is very important. I did that of one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, one of my favorite things about Rollo is art as an activist, the artist as activist. He, in his books, he talks about Guernica and after the war, and we know even People in Haiti were singing, dancing after the earth as a way of expressing both the angst and re-inspiriting everybody to move forward with the singing and the dancing. Rollo says, um, what this brings us to the most important kind of courage of all. Whereas moral color, courage is the righting of wrongs, creative courage, in contrast, is the discovering of new forms, new symbols, new patterns on which a new society can be built. And we all know now the cry is for innovation, creating new forms, old forms are falling apart. It is often artists who can see the patterns in chaos. Some of you in this group know that very well. He says, but those who present directly and immediately the new forms and symbols are the artists, the dramatists, the musicians, the painters, the dancers, the poets, and those poets of the religious sphere we call saints from the courage to create. We saw this, I just saw a book in the uh, exhibit hall called um, uh, something about statistics for the terrorized. And that was on the cover. So anybody who has trouble with statistics, look for that in the exhibit hall. I did that in, in Oslo. Um, Monk just gets it. All right, here's some examples of international work, and Rollo was also doing that. He traveled through Europe, he was very much an internationalist. Um, Carl Rogers followed on that, and I think that humanistic psychology is actually finding. I'd like to thank Dr. Xing, my friend and mentor from Beijing, who came all the way from Beijing here. And as we're doing this work, Dr. Xing, in many countries, it really is the heart is what touches people first. The words, the explanation, the theory seem to come separate, but that's where we kind of can make, I think, and need to make a connection these days. This was from Israel. I worked in some trauma divisions. I actually got evacuated in 2006. It was another intifada. Um, and I did this work with, these are the uh, Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF. They have something called the Casualty Division, which is the young officers who are the ones, and you've seen some films about this, they have to go visit wounded soldiers in the middle of the night, they have to break the news to families, they're really on the front lines, and they're kind of like 19-year-old kids. And scared, she writes, one of them writes, don't worry, the end, and they label there, we, we, we move, we, we draw, we write poetry, and one of them said, don't worry, be happy, calm on the outside, chaos inside. When the mess is inside, it's difficult to see one extreme to another, side to side. 
This was Lois Hoffman and others, thank you. This was from Nanjing, where again, this was one of our first, and Lois has written about East-West psychology, cultural exchanges, and intellectual dialogue between East and West, how to face suffering and create a life of value. There's a photo, you can see Dr. Schneider, some of us are in this photo, if you look closely, 2010. <laughs> This is the group that I was doing there. I do love folk dance. The woman I'm dancing with happened to work in the kitchen in the place we were in. And um, they get together and just dance as exercise. They were there. They were from the Bai uh, culture and they just do the dances as they don't go to the gym and wear Fitbits. So this is us dancing and sharing our music and dance in China. <coughs> Quickly, this is kind of translating some of this, and I could talk about the body as a way of knowing kinesthetic imagining. Imagine translating that into Chinese. They know more than we do about working with the body. These are the three graces. Um, this is the other thing Mark Yang is, um, who's also doing a group in China on existential humanistic, brings me in as the token body person and the feminine. So I give talks on the feminine and the embodied in humanistic psychology, which I think we really need to bring back. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a translated in Chinese, as you can see. Uh, these are some quick photos from Istanbul. This is Jordan. Um, I'm, let's see if I can play this one. No. I think I'm just gonna move to the, this one will play uh, uh, just for a moment. It's just the one at the end that Lots of video clips, and we can't show all of them in the interest of time. There's one at the end I do want to show because I, I think it's kind of funny. This is, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Rollo's reputation as he, I think he called himself a gentle warrior. And he was really rebellious in a very um, courtly manner. But he was always willing to take on the big themes in psychology, in the world. And so I see some of my activism in APA. I'm quite proud to be a not so gentle warrior in APA. And the, the, the part that I just want to talk about really is bringing the arts in. So um, I think you can get uh, copies of this if you like. I also have copies of an article I wrote, Tribute to Rollo May in the Arts, that was in the journal. We can pass it around and some of these references are in there. Um, these are some articles I've written. The first is from, with students from Istanbul. The second is about the conference in Israel. Um, the third is Schneider and Galvin. Thank you. We interviewed Robert May. Um, there was an interview with Irv Yalom. This, uh, Uh, 
Um, so I'm sort of particularly proud of this. About over 10 years ago, I was a member of Division 10, which is Psychology and the Arts, and at that time it was very academic, and there really wasn't much for clinicians there. So I started a special interest group in our division called Psychotherapy and the Arts. Um, I will leave some of the um, uh, newsletters in the hospitality suite, which is in the Marriott Marquis. Please join, it's really for everybody. You don't have to be psychologist, you don't have to be a member, there's no fees. It's just a clearinghouse for those of us who are interested in the arts and creativity. We put out a newsletter whenever we get around to it, which has been about twice a year. This year, for the first time, it's official. We have APA working with us. It's on the Division 10 website. It's on our website. And it actually looks good. It's actually grown up. So uh, anybody join it, it just keeps the conversation going. Uh, you can read the mission statement. It's interested in the healing power of the arts. Uh, 112 members, we have more than that. Larry Graber has been one of the editors. Uh, and this year, for the first time, some of you know there's a joint collaborative panel with Division 10, has collaborated with some of the other divisions, and it's made a mini convention. And this is the first time we've brought the arts of the, uh, for, for clinicians so uh, explicitly into APA. So we're very excited this year that that's happening. Now this, good, it's going to play. This is uh, the last, promise. Yes, and uh, it's three minutes. I have three minutes? Okay, so this was the opening at APA, I believe, two years ago. APA, when I was on council, um, APA has a choir. So Dr. Frank Worrell leads the choir, and we did, is Phyllis here? Uh, you'll see, the three of us are dancing. I brought in my colleague, who's the president of the American Dance Therapy. I'm a dance therapist, association, and we, uh, we were part of the opening the opening choir to um, enliven the opening of APA. So here it is. led by Dr. Frank Morrell, as well as members of the Movement Choir, led by Dr. Zach
you thank you. That sounded and looked beautiful. And I have to say, you really provided us with a sense of unity that prepares us to move together throughout 